Today's video will feature the highlights of a paper entitled Outdoor Growing of Clean Edible Ginger Seed by a Pot in Pot in Pot Sub-Irrigation Method, which was presented at the Proceedings of the 35th National Agricultural Plastics Congress in 2009. This growing method doesn't require pumps or electricity. There is a link to the paper in the video description. First, a little background. In Hawaii, edible ginger is grown commercially in deep, loose soil. Seed-borne and soil-borne diseases may cause significant yield losses. The first step in disease control is to plant clean seed pieces which are free from bacterial wilt, nematodes, and other pathogens. We will explore a pot in pot in pot growing method to grow clean ginger seed pieces. We will start with a 10.3 liter plastic pot with no drainage holes. A microtube connected to an irrigation tube is inserted into the pot and supplies a 5 centimeter depth of nutrient solution and this is maintained by a float valve at the end of the irrigation tube. A 9.5 liter plastic pot that has drainage holes nests inside the original pot. Notice that the 5 centimeter depth of nutrient solution flows into this pot. Well, so far we have a pot in pot arrangement. Next, an upside down 3 liter plastic pot rests on the bottom of the previous pot. This becomes the pot in pot in pot arrangement that you were probably curious about. The green pot will be filled with a peat perlite growing medium. The upside down pot will save 3 liters of growing medium and also provide an air space at the bottom of the pot. The growing medium on the outer peripheries of the upside down pot is wet by the nutrient solution and this automatically moistens all of the growing medium in the pot by capillary action. Here is the 10.3 liter pot with no drainage holes. A microtube which supplies nutrient solution is inserted into the pot. A low profile 3 liter plastic pot conveniently fits into the 9.5 liter pot which has drainage holes. This pot in pot arrangement will nest into the previous pot to become a pot in pot in pot. A peat perlite growing medium such as this Promix was used to fill the middle pot. Here's a neat cutaway showing the upside down pot resting on the bottom of the middle pot. The 5 centimeters of nutrient solution will wet the growing medium on the bottom of the pot and this will moisten the growing medium throughout the pot by capillary action. Just as a short review, these are the main components of the pot in pot in pot system. This short film clip from another project demonstrates how the 50 gram seed pieces are planted into the pot. The pots will be placed on a 2 by 10 lumber board which is supported at two points by concrete blocks. A float valve sump assembly supplies and maintains a 5 centimeter depth of nutrient solution in the pots. Weed barrier fabric placed over the ground helps to maintain the area, but as you can see some weeds do manage to break through. The float valve sump assembly consisted of a cattle tank float valve fitted inside of a black plastic pot. Nutrient solution flows from a float valve when a low liquid level allows the red float to swing downward. A rising liquid level causes the red float to swing upward and therefore shut off the flow of the liquid. Nutrient solution flows from the float valve sump assembly into the irrigation tube and then into the pot and pot and pot. Notice that the solution level is the same in both containers and no electricity or pumps are needed. No plumbing fittings are needed. An undersized hole is drilled into the pot and another one is punched into the tube. The microtube is inserted into these holes and achieves a tight fit. But be very alert because a leak anywhere in the system could drain all the nutrient solution from this large tank which supplies all the nutrient solution to the float valve sump assemblies. Notice that the tank is raised up on concrete blocks so that gravity flow can propel the nutrient solution to the float valves. The tank was topped off periodically by adding water with a hose. 
the electrical conductivity of the nutrient solution in the tank was maintained in the range of 1.5 to 2 ms by adding a 1 to 1 ratio of these two concentrated fertilizer stock solutions. The electrical conductivity of the nutrient solution in the tank was measured with an EC meter after it was mixed in. Trials were conducted at the University of Hawaii Waikia Agricultural Experiment Station where one, two, three, or four ginger rhizome seed pieces were planted per pot, and the pot in pot in pot was compared with just a pot in pot arrangement. Since this was an outdoor trial, a comparison was made with or without a rain gutter to divert the rainfall. Individual pots have labels of one, two, three, and four. Some have a plus and some do not have any designation. The plus refers to the pot in pot in pot. The no designation refers to just the pot in pot. The numbers one to four refer to the number of seed pieces per pot. Rain will dilute the nutrient solution and the solution level will rise in the pots so an overflow hole is provided at a 0.7.5 centimeters from the bottom. A rain gutter intercepts about one third of the rainfall and lessens this problem. Seed pieces were planted in early April, and the ginger plants were growing very nicely by June 27th. Here's another view about a week later. Four more weeks have passed, and the plants look just great. After another 17 days, the pots with three and four seed pieces appear to have more foliage than the pots with one and two seed pieces. Another five weeks have passed, and the plants seem to be growing very well. But wait, there seems to be something going on with the plants on the left. There's saucers under the pots. In some of the treatments, the rhizome growth has been so great that it split both the inside and outside pots. It takes a pretty large force to break these pots. The saucer prevented the nutrient solution from leaking out and also provided a way to sub-irrigate these pots. I guess now we have a pot in pot in pot in saucer method. Here's a view of the project just a little under six months from planting. The ginger growth looks very good. The growth was a little bit smaller in the row on the right due to heat buildup in the black pots, so we installed white barrier plastic to shade the pots. Two more months have passed and some of the foliage is beginning to die back. It's getting close to harvest. By this time, more of the pots have split. It's pretty clear that we should have used larger pots. After eight and a half months, the foliage was cut and the crop was terminated. Here, the weight of the ginger rhizomes and the pots and the growing medium was about 11 pounds or five kilograms. The first step in harvesting is to depot the ginger. A view from the bottom shows some roots growing in the upside down pot. The upside down pot was removed and this leaves a big hole in the bottom of the mass of roots, rhizomes, and growing medium. For this particular treatment, the mass of roots, rhizomes, and growing medium weighed about 11 pounds or 5 kilograms. The mass was placed in a wire basket and broken apart. Then the ginger clumps were washed to separate the growing medium. It looks like all of this ginger came from a pot with three seed pieces. The clumps were hand cleaned. They will be stored like this. Then they will be broken into approximately 50 gram seed pieces shortly before planting the next crop. Some of the rhizomes were somewhat malformed and curved because the pots were too small. I guess we could call this a hand of ginger. The mother seed piece remained intact even at harvest time. Here are the ginger rhizomes produced from one, two, three, and four seed pieces in a pot in pot method versus a pot in pot in pot method and where a gutter versus no gutter were compared. Notice that some of these cleaned rhizomes fill the whole pot. Ginger is normally hilled to spread out the rhizomes and this could be done by planting in a partially filled pot and making several additions of growing medium. A more compact rhizome mass will result from not hilling and that is acceptable for seed ginger. 
Data from three years showed that planting only one seed piece per pot resulted in the lowest yields, and the highest yields were obtained when three or four seed pieces were planted per pot. When comparing the gutter versus the no gutter, significantly higher yields were obtained in the gutter treatment during 2006 and 2007, which were two wet years. The pot and pot and pot treatment with the upside down pot produced higher yields in two of the three years than the control pot and pot treatment, and there was a savings of growing medium. It looks like there's some benefit to having an air space in the bottom of a pot. Individual pots with the highest yields resulted when three or four seed pieces were planted, when an upside down pot was used, in other words, the pot and pot and pot system, and when a gutter was used. Here are some conclusions. An outdoor pot and pot and pot sub-irrigation method maintained ginger free of diseases for three seasons. The highest absolute ginger rhizome yields occurred when upside down pots were placed in 9.5 liter growing pots and rainfall was diverted by a gutter from pots planted with three or four clean seed pieces. The 9.5 liter pots were too small and this resulted in competitive yield loss, burst pots, and somewhat malformed rhizomes. That's all for now, so I bid you aloha. Mm -hmm.